Yo, what's up, guys? Brennan Wolf here. I've got a, another matchup guide for you. We're going to be doing Fiora versus Renekton. So, this lane, obviously, I haven't seen too much Renekton, but for some reason, the last couple of days I have. So, and I know he gets played in lower elos a lot. Uh, and we had a really good game against him the other day, so I just wanted to make this video, throw it out there. Uh, I think it went really well, and it kind of showcased this lane in a really good way. So, the reason I took Scaling Runes is because it's Renekton, and Renekton doesn't scale too hard. And I want to like take advantage of that and take scaling run so absolute focus and gathering storm now this lane can actually be kind of crazy i feel like renekton can actually do crazy damage like if he goes full damage and he takes bork and full damage items and he can just one shot you so i think that going unflinching and bone plating or second wind or conditioning any of those i think going the resolve secondary tree is probably more ideal if you're not too comfortable with this lane but with this lane, we took the scaling runes because we want to take advantage of the fact that he doesn't outscale us and we outscale him. So really what we're looking for in the early levels are some good trays off of his Q. So his Q is on a pretty decent cooldown, and if he messes it up and he doesn't hit you, you can actually kill him off level 1. But it's a little bit more difficult. But you'll see that I play a little bit aggressive at the level 1. Also in this game, I believe, let's see. Oh, you know what? I just got thrown off because I saw that. I saw that the sums were down. The sums aren't actually down. So, most Renekton's are going to take Bone Plating, so usually you just want to Q that and proc that, and then look for the all-in, but as you can see, I'm taking Q damage, so I can't really find an opportunity. Sometimes I like to try and rush level 2, and try to all-in with the parry for the attack speed slow, and the movement slow, and then go for that. And then also, I always take Ignite as well. I'm looking for an early kill. Like, if I can get an early kill, that's massive. And it can be a little bit difficult to stun him off of his W, now, there is an indicator that shows up for when he activates it, and usually it depends on the skin, sometimes his eyes glow or whatever, or you can hover the actual like champion uh, card, and if you like click on the character, it'll put it up in the corner here, and then you can see when it activates, but that's hard to do, move your eyes up here, move it back down. Usually I look for like visual cues when I'm trying to uh, stun him with his stun, but the thing with this lane is you can't get behind, you cannot die early, or else you will lose the lane. So I think we're actually going to fight here. Level 3 is a big power spike for Fiora. Uh, but it's also a big power spike for him as well. So he goes for it. And we're able to finish the kill with Ignite. So what I did there, by the way, is I would just assume, right? I didn't have vision on him when he went into the bush. I would just assume that he's going to try to stun me. Now he still gets it, but I can't. I use my parry right when I stepped out of vision. Or step back into vision when he could see me because that's the first thing he's going to do is especially if he can do it while he's in the bush he can stun me while he's in the bush and i can't see it i'm just going to go ahead and blind parry into the bush and then that actually ends up being enough to stop him because it it ends his e cooldown so he wasn't able to e away so we were basically wasting time he e's through a minion right and he's got long cooldowns as well i mean we're talking seven seconds 16 and 18 so if he does a full combo and can't get out the more I stall this and wait for the second E to go away, the better it's going to be because then he can't leave. So we wait, and now his second E cooldown is down and he can't get away. So now we can just all in very easily. So we're really looking to take advantage of those super, super long cooldowns. If he ever full combos like that and we still have like half HP or if he misses something, then we want to go back in and try to finish that kill. Like I said, when we look at these... His Q, 7 seconds. His W, 16. And his E, 18. And this is at, you know, level 3 in the early levels. And if we get that opportunity where he E's in, stuns us, maybe he stuns a minion. Or we get the stun on him, then we just got to all in and get towards in between him and his tower. Um, we want to stun him, get in between his tower, and basically start kiting him this way and coming through. So I didn't get the opportunity to back, so I have to play a little bit more careful. I'm looking to just get any trades I can get. Like, this is perfect, right? He uses the combo, and then we're able to get a full trade on him. So this is exactly what I was talking about before, where he goes in with the E, and he hits us with the W, and then that's our opportunity to try and get as much damage as we can. I was trying to Q to hit the vital. I missed it. He Ws. We hit one. We slow the attack speed, sneak in another E, and then Q him from max range. We Q him from max range so he couldn't do any damage back to us. So it's still sketchy because the wave is pushing in. So we should really let this push into the tower and just collect the minions. Now this is something you see right now. This is funny. I, re I remember playing this game and I was actually thinking this. This is almost impossible to react to. I actually remember what's going to happen here. He's going to flash 
W and uh, ignite me, flash stun and ignite me. And I had my finger on the parry key and I remember this. This is such a hard thing to react to and you gotta be really careful of this when a Renekton has flash and ignite up that they can just come in. I really think that if you're under a quarter HP that you should just back and go back and get your HP because this happens far too often in the Renekton lane where he's gonna literally just flash on you and kill you. And it's just, it's not possible to react to. It's so difficult. So now at this point, if you noticed, the first thing I bought was Executioners. And the reason the first thing I bought was Executioners, even with all the nerfs to it and everything like that, uh, Executioners is a great item into lanes like um, Atrox, Renekton, Aurelia, Warwick. Uh, he heals so much from his Q, and especially when he goes into um, Dominus on his ulti. It just, you want to have some sort of healing reduction. Especially because he's going to gain 250 max health, too, with the um, with the ulti. But Ignite's not going to do everything that you need it to do. Like, you're not going to have Ignite every time that you see an opportunity for a trade. You're not going to have Ignite up every time that you see an opportunity for an all-in. And Executioner basically fills those gaps. But it's also high AD. It's like 20 AD as well for 800 gold. It's just worth it to grab it first. And I always... My biggest thing, especially when I do like the coaching sessions and stuff like that, is I think that Fiora is best when you're going straight for damage instead of going defensive. The only time I really ever recommend going like Tab Eyes first or something like that is into like Quinn or like Lucian Top. Or if you're really just, let's say, let's say it was like Trindamir who was up here or something like that, then sure, because it's just like strictly all auto attacks. But this guy's using abilities, right? He's using W. Q, E, and all that, and he's doing damage through that. So I really feel like it's better to go damage and just rely on your uh, mechanics and try to get those ulti procs when you hit level six. And if you have executioners, well, then you're gonna be able to stop the healing, do a bunch of damage, and then get healing yourself when you hit all four. And hopefully that'll keep you alive long enough and stop his healing enough for you to actually get the kill. Now, usually what I've noticed lately with Renekton's is that they have been taking Bork Rush, which it's even better if a Renekton takes if a Renekton takes Bramble against you or something that's really bad or Executioners because then it stops your healing. So what we want to see is we want him to come back to lane with like a Pickaxe or a Vamp Spectre. That's a good sign. If we see him with a Bramble or an or an Executioners, then we got to play a little bit more careful because we know that when he does damage or we do damage to him, we're not going to heal as much. So him coming back to lane with a Vamp Spectre is more of like a green light. Uh, we're going to slow push. We're going to put pressure on him try to crash this entire wave so that we might get a good roam timer to be able to go mid or something like that. Just want to queue into him to make sure that he's actually letting that wave go into the tower. And then we basically can do whatever we want since we crashed this giant wave on him. And so it looks like we're going to try to roam mid because they're fighting. And a free kill. And that's a big thing too, just beyond um, just the matchup guide. When you're shoving waves like that, it gives you a free free move on the map. Now, you might miss a wave, because I had to go all the way to mid to get that, but I ended up getting a kill, assisting in a kill, and that's always worth it, just for like five minions. So now we're going to see the level six. So this is where it can be a little dangerous, because if he gets a stun on us, and he still has his E up, then we're dead. And playing... Playing max range Qs for vitals and stuff like that is going to be your best bet. You never want to walk too close to him in melee range. If you can get him to E forward and then try to dodge or use your parry and then like walk away, that's always best. But we really want to avoid getting it stunned. Especially when he's level 6. So I'm playing really safe. I'm just staying within my minions, but I'm also trying to push him out. And like I said, max range Qs doing a little bit of damage here and there, making sure his bone plating is never up, and just keeping the option of him all inning us away is ideal. So he's trying to freeze. We'll try and do... So notice how bad of a trade that is. But right now I'm trying to leave anyways. I'm trying to get out of the lane. But then we get a good trade back, right? Because his cooldowns are so high. So he did all that, right? He did all that, and then everything goes on cooldown for him. 15 seconds, 16 seconds, 4 seconds. So then I see a good vital, and we just go for it, and we get the trade back before he's got anything back up at all. So it's perfect. Obviously, the second we see him R, that means he's going to all in. And sometimes, for the most part, if you see him R like that, it feels like a gank is coming. But he just went for this outright. And then he has Ignite, and that's probably why he did it. 
I still have parry up, but I missed the stun. But I'm able to use it, slow him. Even if he would have tried to keep pushing in, it would have been fine. But now we're in a tough spot. We're low. There's a fruit up, I believe, and we can go and grab that. We just take the roam. Get another kill, I believe. Perfect. Now we have double buffs. Now it's just like our fight to win if he decides to uh, to fight us. So he's going to play careful again. We're going to try to sit in between those minions, push him back, try to push him out of getting any CS. So we've made, what, three or two roam plays now, and we're still up in CS. And that's exactly what we want to do, especially since we're running scaling runes as well. If we can win this lane, then that's just amazing. If we come out of the lane even, then that's a win as well. Either way, we just don't want to die early, and we didn't. Well, we did actually from the flash, but we had already gotten a kill earlier, so it was even. Now at this point, I'm kind of this is kind of trolling really. We should have just leave. I'm trying to bait him to fight me because I had double buffs and I know that I can win it. But really, you should just crash that wave and leave. Even though I think, if I remember right, I think this does end up being a kill. It's still better to just crash it and then go back and spend your gold because I'm literally sitting on 2,400 gold. So I'm actually trolling right here. Like I said, I think this ends up being a kill, but it's not worth it when, you ha when you're sitting on so much. Because he's sitting on 2100 as well, and if, it's, if he has to stay to catch that wave and then try to push in the next one, you might be able to catch him. Hit all four vitals. Make sure you focus on the vitals so you get your ulti. He's got no healing reduction besides ignite, so we're able to out heal him. So we win that fight. Now... This is what we really like. If we ever have to all in him, that's what we're looking for is to keep enough distance on him where he has to double E. Because we don't want him to be able to E in and then do his trade and then get away. So we keep our distance from him and kind of stay at a point where we force him to have to double E. So now that he's double E'd, we know that we can use our W, even if it's not a stun, for an attack speed slow and then go back in. And like I said, he's got no cooldowns once he's used everything. So we see this. He's on cooldown. He's got no W because he used it like 10 seconds ago and it takes 15 seconds to come back up. And he got it right at the end once we uh, got our ulti heals off. So basically now that we're 3-1, and one, this lane's basically over. Now anytime you play against Renekton, I like to take the Gore Drinker build. So I'm looking to go get the Executioners, get a Whip, and then get... Um, a tier because for the gore drinker build I like to go gore man immune and ravenous which I think is the best for the gore build and then there's the stride build too but you wouldn't go the stride build into into Renekton because he's melee you're typically taking the now notice by the way look at that damage with Bork that's what I'm talking about the damage is insane with Bork this is what we got to be really careful of he definitely damage checked me here and it surprised me Huge damage. So once once Renekton has Bork, you got to be really careful. Even though we're three and one, since I'm building so out of whack and I've got a little bit of everything, he is going to be a, pretty strong against me. Get ganked, we'll die there. But we still have more gold than him from our roam plays. So we've got 300 more. And I think there comes a point where we just will win this over and over again, though. And that's typically around like the two item mark as long as we've stayed even in between. So I think I'm going to get damage checked even more here, by the way. Because now he's got three long swords that he just bought. But I'm still keeping that pressure on him and trying to get as much trades as possible. But that W with the Bork is just insane. So at that point, I'm definitely going to be more careful. Let this push in. And try to make, try to look for any mistakes under tower. A lot of Renexons will try to dive you. And he does. And we get the kill there. So that's perfect. And the second, like I said, you can always tell, Renekton's a pretty... It, it's pretty visible when he's going to all-in you. Usually a Renekton will always ult, and that's how you know. And then you got to make your decision really quickly. Be like, do I want to fight this, or do I just want to run away? Because there, there was a world where I just run away from this instead, right? I still had flash up. The second that he ults, I could literally just Q away and flash. And then just be done with it and not even try to fight it. So you have the option once once he ults like that to know that it's an all-in. Anytime he ults, it's an all-in. He's not going to ult to clear a wave. He's not going to ult to scare you. He's going to ult to try to get the kill every single time, which is the one nice thing about Renekton.
is that you can make that decision as soon as you see the ulti and be like, either I'm running away or I'm going to try to fight this. So we've got Conquer, obviously, right? So we definitely want to stack our Conquer. But this is what I'm talking about, max range Qs and how effective they really are, right? So we see this top vital and we just Q. We just Q in place to hit that vital. Now we get a little bit of movement speed, go back in, get another Q. We hit the Ignite because we're going to all in. A little slide parry, go out of vision so that he can't stun us. And then if he would have held his stun, he stuns a minion. That's what gets him killed. He definitely could have just held the stun and I would have just had to walk back the tower. I was looking for a kill because I know he just used R to try and dive me so he doesn't have it up. But I don't have mine either, so I have to play this really careful. The slide parry was enough to slow his movement speed so that he couldn't get the stun off, but since he used it on the minion, we went ahead and went for the kill, and we ended up getting it. So, just kiting him off the vitals. Renekton's pretty slow, and Renekton's very kiteable. He's not as mobile as Fiora is, especially with the movement speed from her vitals, and then the um, Q as well. Especially in the late game, when we hit a Q and our cooldown goes down to like 3 seconds, uh, it's very easy to just kite this guy around. So at this point, now we're taking our Gore Drinker, we're grabbing our Tiamat, and then we'll start buying boots. Typically, I like to get my Mythic before I even get Tier 1 boots. I think Mythic is better. You get movement speed from hitting vitals, you have your Q for mobility, and then you have your ulti that gives you movement speed as well. So I usually try to get my Mythic first before I grab any type of boots. So at this point, at this point, there's no reason why Renekton should ever win uh, a 1v1 with us in the side lane. And I know this game is more of like, uh, we kind of dominated them here, but it was a good lane, in my opinion for a matchup guide because there was no real jungle pressure. Viego hovered top, and but he didn't gank, and then Shivana only ganked one time. So there wasn't too many ganks. This was more just of a straight on 1v1 versus me and Renekton. And I think that it really showed how the lane should go. But yeah, at this point, we, we survived the early game. We got a lead. He didn't get uh, any kills on us besides that one. And now there's nothing he can do to us. We can just play off the vitals and do major damage. Um, along with Ignite, and we can use our ulti to run away if we ever get caught in a tight spot. So, that was a pretty flawless laning phase. Well, that is the matchup guide. There's nothing else showing the, uh, the laning phase. So, to recap, we're uh, taking advantage of his super long cooldowns. We're looking for any all-in we can get at level 2 or level 3 to get a lead on him. We take Ignite. I'm taking Scaling Runes, you can take the Resolve Secondary Tree if you'd like. Always take Conquer and Rush Executioners, and you should be alright. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, peace out.